and welcome back. <laughs> uh, we have with us um, members of the Maya Hieroglyphics, Hieroglyphics Writing, Club. Writing Club. And we have two students uh, from Mount Carmel High School. We have Jaime Duarte and Andre Silva. And uh, it's a fourth form student and? Fourth form, so about to leave too. Picked and we have the founder <laughs> of the Maya Hieroglyphics Writing Club, Jorge de Leon, who's also a tour guide by profession. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is fascinating. And I said to uh, Kevin earlier in the show that I'm a bit jealous because we didn't have this kind of fun stuff in school when we were going to high school. Um, and so I really just want to know where the idea came from. Okay, well, uh, the idea, first, first I fell in love with the hieroglyphs and the history, that's, mm -hmm. that's where it all started, and yeah. then, you know, once I attained the knowledge of how it works and how you present it and the ins and outs of the hieroglyphs, yeah. then that, you know, another passion arose because I realized that our Maya people could speak the language, but they could not write the language. Mm. And, and having said that, let me just show you this. So this right here is a, this is a copy of one of the Dresden Codex. Of the what? So yes. four codices, three okay. codices survived in, in, in Mexico. Uh -huh. And Diego de Landa, what is this, like a this is, trans, like a This is a book. No, this is a book. This is an ancient book. Codex? Codex. Codex. So one codex or codices. So only four survived in Mexico. Yes, so this is the Dresden Codex. Mm. And this is a bookmark? You have bookmarks too? Well, the, that's the cover of the book, That's co the think. cover of the book. Yeah, it says So Dresden this is a replica, codex, this yeah. is a replica of, of the, the codex. Um, this is one of the, the best of the three that survived. This is the, the one that has is in better condition. Yeah. And what was this written on yeah. originally? This was written all right to make these books. The Maya would take the bark of a fig tree and they would beat it with a bark beater. And once they had the fibers, then they would take limestone mm -hmm. mortar and they would plaster. And once they they plaster a very thin layer on that on that um, on the on the fibers, then they would dry it, and then they would crack and break it so that they could bifold in that, in that manner. And then they would use each of the pages to write their hieroglyphs. And the ink was what? The, the ink would all pigment. Pigment. Yeah, they would use uh, the cochineal bug to get the, the blue, um, the anato plant to get the red, yeah. um, cinnabar anato sometimes. Anato, which we use for ricardo. ricardo. For ricardo, yeah. they would use uh, cinnabar, which is one of the minerals also for, for, uh, for the red. Um, and then charcoal for the for the black, you know. So that is what we found on the on the different codices, and also in on walls and murals that um, archaeologists have found. Is oh. this a book? That, I mean, obviously <laughs> it is a book. But is it like a novel? novel. Is it history? Yeah. Is it? It's a little bit of everything. It has it has uh, most of it are tables, um, calendars. So especially the portion that you have right now yeah. is okay. the Venus cycle. So the Maya were actually here? able on the bottom, then the red numbers on the bottom, that's, that's the Venus okay, cycle here. there. So there are about four or six pages that tell you about the cycle of Venus. So the Maya were aware when Venus was the morning star mm -hmm. and they would tell you for how many days it would, it would be visible. Mm -hmm. And then they would add the numbers and tell you for how many days Venus would not be visible. But they, their interpretation was Venus is visible in the east and th that's why we can see it. And then on the table, it tells us that it's not visible. So they would assume that it's on the north. So you can't see it because it's on top. And then it's visible again as the evening star on the west. So they, they, are, they are associated with the west as an evening star. And then it was not visible again because it was going through the passage on the south before it came back up. So it's a lot and of it's astrology. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then mythology. I mean, there we have the, one of the um, goddess pouring water. This you one? know, right there. Where's the, oh. the, the, the female. That's, yeah, that's, okay. that's one of the gods. And then the, the mouth that looks like a serpent or a crocodile with water coming out of it on the upper. Here? Go over to my left. There. Here? Yeah. You will go down a little bit. That. Oh, so oh yeah, there's a serpent in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. So 
there's a lot of symbolism with that because for the Maya, caves were sacred. And in art, caves are depicted as the open mouth of a crocodile, the open mouth of a serpent, um, a turtle. And when water is coming out of it, and some of the most important and for tourism mm -hmm. and famous places that we have in Belize are caves with water rushing out of them. So this is why. Right? So this is this is a little bit of what that is being depicted. You know, we That's look at, so cool. If you look at we look at these temples now, we call them ruins, which I have they're Mayan who, sites. They're we call Mayan them Mayan sites. sites. Um, but we forget that these Mayans are super smart, no? that they actually invented the zero. This, this, these are not oh, yeah. people who were just sitting around and, you know, they had... What can we learn from the writings, apart from just, okay, wow, this is pretty? Well, we have... Th this, 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 is, this is an example that we have there. Um, I printed out... Um, archaeologists found two panels of hieroglyphs yeah. at Srinantonich. Now, the amazing thing about these panels that were found is that they were not made at Shunantonich, they were made at Caracol, which is and about 55 moved? miles from San Ignacio. They were moved, each stone, the, the, the stone that weighs the least, I think it's about 1,600 pounds. It's a huge limestone slab, and it, the, the, these are just two pieces. It was <laughs> a whole hieroglyphic stairway that was built at Caracol, and it was Lord Khan II, one of the rulers of Caracol, who made it. And he was just bragging about him conquering a city we now know as Naranjo, which is in Guatemala. Wait, sorry. They moved a 1,600-pound stone. From Caracol to is, Guatemala. Which is about, what, 200, 100 and something miles? About 55 miles from San Ignacio to a city that... Would, but driving, they would have to driving, they would, they would have come to walk. through. They yeah. would walk. Over rivers, or rivers. Trees, rivers, mountains, yeah. mountains. Yeah. yes. You know what that means, though? And it means that there was a master... A uh, writer in Caracol, like how oh. we outsource work, and yeah. it, the pop, I'm, I'm tapping into my Mayan roots here. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's that. I'm only joking. But like, like, how did you come to to learn all of this? I mean, where does one go? I we we go to the Mayan sites. We see these um, amazing sites, and and sometimes we have it explained to us what 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 uh, the hieroglyphs say, and sometimes we just admire the beauty. But where did you go to attain all this knowledge on, on what it's saying and also be able to teach it? Books. Yeah. Uh, a lot of research. Yeah. I think I bought every book that was out there talking about how the hieroglyphs work, how the system works, because I was just amazed about how the people, how people at one point transitioned from even having a language to then being able to put that language on, on writing. And, and then I think what threw me over the edge was two key persons, yeah. and I need to yeah. say this because mm -hmm. one He's of them is Dr. Jaime Awe, I knew uh, that, yeah. who inspired me, and when I, when I didn't know anything about numbers and I wanted to know more about numbers, he had the patience of going over and over and over and okay. over until I got it. And then that was for the numbers and the mathematics and all that stuff. And when it comes to the hieroglyphs, um, it was Bruce Love who threw me off the edge. I had all this understanding of how little pieces, but I had parts of the puzzle, but I couldn't put them together. I love and I did you one workshop. Yeah. Now, Bruce Love, he made his life giving back the ability to write to the Maya people in Honduras and Guatemala. So he did not decide to go uh, to a Maya site and decipher glyphs and work and make a name for himself. He realized that it was something that wasn't his and he wanted to give it back. So he started working with the people who speak Maya. Mm -hmm. So today we have people in Guatemala and, and Honduras that Maya speakers yeah. are teaching other Maya people to, to actually write and read Maya hieroglyphs. I imagine this fits well into your profession as well. And I was sharing with you that when I visited Copan, the tour guide was translating the hieroglyphs as well. So I, can un I don't know if it's a part of their formal training or if that tour guide was just particularly interested in learning. What, how, I, I mean, think I think it would it would have been both. Okay. The, the interests that the guys have, and then the opportunities to, to learn yeah. are there. You see, I did not get a chance to get into a workshop until Bruce Love came to Belize and did these workshops for Maya people. Yeah. So they weren't they weren't organized by by BTB or yeah. or anybody else. It was this guy in his efforts to teach Maya that came and and presented to the Maya and. 
because of my love for the glyphs, I snuck in and became part of it. <laughs> because <laughs> obviously I'm not Maya. I'm not Maya. <laughs> so some, this, is, know, this is where, where it comes. Past, yeah. yeah, in the past, like yeah. a couple blocks long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you sneak into Mount Carmel School yeah. and get kids interested mm -hmm. in learning this? Well, um, when I, first I, qu I quit my job and I decided to go solo. Mm -hmm. So then I had more time on my, on my hands and I could decide when to take a day off. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started approaching the high schools and I approached the principal of Mount Carmel at the time. This is three years ago. And he was excited about it. He said, you should talk to our tourism teacher slash history teacher, and Miss Josephine. Mm -hmm. and Josephine what? Juan. So when I spoke to her, she was like, yes, come, <laughs> let's do it with my students. And then that's where we all started. I said, well, I would love to start a club. And the students bought into it. And they were part of the founding group of, of, of members that started the, the club. So Jaime and Andre, why did this interest you? At first, I thought it was um, social studies extra classes. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to get points. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but after I saw that, how um, it was mostly because of Mr. Lyon, who, how he thought and the dream that he had to spread the knowledge back to the Maya people, I started getting interested in it. Yeah. And I now have the same dream to give back to the Mayas what the was somewhat taken from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was I was with Andre at, at the day that we went mm -hmm. um, the first time uh, to the Glyph Club, and I had the same dream as yeah. him because uh, um, what better give than to give them back their writing? Yeah. Do you speak Mayan? Um, no, but I learned with Mr. Lyon how to write names and also words. So if you learn to write it, you learn to speak it too, right? So, Some of it. So yeah, you, a little bit. Even if just the kitchen Spanish version, right? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I, I want to talk about the cool factor, though. I mean, I could imagine, you know, you're trying to court somebody, you send them a note, and the teacher can't read it, and you send it in Glyph. You ever tried that one yet? Um, <laughs> no, because um, not most of them know. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but that's the one way to get a second conversation. You say, I'm not encouraging this teacher. <laughs> But you send them a note. I, I remember when I, got, when I got married, I used the three um, symbols, one for love, um, one for fertility, and the other one for forever. Um, and it was cool. Everybody looked at it. Man, what was that? And I, I, I Googled it. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even know if it's right. Um, they were Mayan. Yes, they were. Okay. They're Mayan sites. You plug in what you want to say, and it, it, yeah. it pops it back out. Um, how, how do you... Right. Sorry. Uh, 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 does it give you a different appreciation now when you look at, for example, when you go to um, Sunatonich and you're selling these pieces of slate with the carvings on it, do you have a new appreciation for it? Do you look at it and go for grammatical errors? That's not written right. What, what, how has it changed your social um, appreciation for what you look at? Well, um, I, I, I just, when I, when I go to Sunatonich and, and see the glyphs, uh, at first, um, I didn't know what they mean, but now that Lion taught me, um, I kind of like see see the the uh, pictures and yeah. different appreciation. Understand a bit, yeah. Nice. I appreciate what Lion taught me. You know, if you think about it, it's early television because it's pictures <laughs> as communication, <laughs> and and that's what TV is images. You you it's images that you see. It's you, early Twitter. You're not seeing no Twitter is words. Pictures. Uh, uh, Pictures. Okay. They use actual images. Emojis. Um. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just, just to add on something, what yeah. um, Jaime was saying is that when, this is one of the things, right? They know the glyphs now. Yeah. And they're familiar with a lot of the hieroglyphs. And if you look at the first, right, right there, yeah. on the, where your pinky finger was, mm -hmm. on top, okay, that all the way to the bottom, all that says machach. Yeah. So the first glyph on the top would be ma. The middle would be cha and then ha. But you read that machach. Machach. Uh, machach. So machach. this is one of the earliest forms of a negation. This is how people would say no. Machach. If you talk to Maya people today, uh, in Kekshi, they would say either ma or maka, depending on who you speak, what, what Maya language you speak. But then the root word, the classic Maya, so 700 AD, 
800 AD, people to say no, they would say machach. So let's yes. do some more education here. Uh, there's Yucatec, Mopan, and Quechi and Maya. Quechi, yes. Three different uh, types of Mayas uh, and three different types of languages as well. Yeah. Some, so there's some overlap, but not, not all words. Um, what are we looking at here? This, this would be classic. Classic Maya. Classic. Okay. classic Maya. Yeah. Classic so before Maya. There, were, there was the diversification for the different uh, regions. Yeah. There, yeah. Okay. You've got to keep in mind that 1,500 years ago, there was only one writing system. Yes. And even though there were several languages, one writing system. So if you find yourself in Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, or El Salvador, it's the same hieroglyphs you will see because it's one system. Right? Even though you have, today we have about 30 recognized Maya languages. Hmm. Guatemala in 1996 recognized 21 Maya languages. Oh, wow. And Mexico recognized an additional eight. And in Belize, how many do we speak? Three. Just the three. Just, Just the, three. the, the, the Yucatec, the Mopan, and the Quechi. And the Quechi. So as a, as a way of bringing it back, you know, there's, there's been a few efforts. Um, sadly, I was looking at a census done in 2010, and I said sadly, and I need to highlight sad, yeah. that um, we had Kekchi speakers, we had Mopan speakers, but there was no Yucatec speakers on the census listed, yeah. listed because the percentage was so small, it wasn't even worth putting a percent there. Yeah. So you just, as other. Yeah. You but know. in Orange Walk, there's Ms. Canton who's working very hard on, yes. on reviving the Yucatec Mayan um, language, the Popatok. Yes, the, the bow game. Popatok, yeah. Um, and, I, and I really think, maybe because a lot of Yucatec Mayans have kind of just moved to an identification of Mestizo. Exactly. Um, which is the origins there. But I, I'm so fascinated by this. And I want to ask, you know, how advanced are your skill levels now? Are you, is it like learning how to write your name and kind of the basics? Is it just being able to comprehend? What, what would you say is your level of, of knowledge of hieroglyphs? Well, according, well, seeing Mr. Lyon's knowledge, I would say I'm still a novice. <laughs> <laughs> novice, yeah. yeah. So, um, still history, uh, like background history to learn about the glyphs. Um, right now we just know how to write it and uh, just the basic. Yeah. and. Can what made you decide, you started three years ago, yeah, three your years. founding members, so for three years you've dedicated yeah. yourself to learning this. What keeps you going back? Um, uh, just learning, learning more uh, yeah. about glyphs. Uh, I, I uh, really f found it as a, like a habit that I have now. Yeah. I really, and I practice at home also. Wow. You're a tourism major? Um, no, no. But, I'm, but I'm planning to to do tourism. Yeah, great. And that was my next question. I mean, doing this, have any you guys said, okay, well, I'm going to do archaeology or I'm going to do? Has this impacted what you want to do in the future? Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, I'm looking to maybe uh, becoming a tour guide also, and uh, uh, and now knowing um, glyphs. You're at an advantage already. Uh, yeah, benefit. I'm interested in. Finishing a translation. I was just going to say, can we do some reading and some writing this morning? Yes. We're running out of time so yeah. fast because this is too right. interesting um, for us. Let, let, let's do just this section okay. here. Yeah. All right. So the, the glyph is left half and right half. In the okay. left half, it's been by just syllables. Yeah. So it's machach. And then the logogram with a phonetic complement, um, li, which would be kawil. So, so we do left to right. Left to right. Left to right, Maya. Left um, to right, and, and then top down, to bottom. Top to bottom. All right. So it's, and this is, so this is one word, and this is another, another word. Another word, yes. Okay. And then you move, because it's left to right, you move over here. You move over there, yeah. Okay. So, ma, cha, ha. And the word would be machach, which is no. Machach. Or machach. 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 Mm -hmm. machach, kawil. Ka. Kawil. That's a logogram. So, so this is one word. Yes. Logogram. So they use logograms and they use syllabograms, right? What is a logo? A logogram Achach. would be a symbol that produces a complete word okay. or idea. And then a syllable would just be, be part of a sound. Part of a sound. And every sound that the Maya made were independent. Mm -hmm. So they would have like um, a combination of consonant vowel. Mm -hmm. Ma would be one, one symbol. 
Me would be another symbol. Me would be another symbol, and, and so forth. So kind of like Mandarin, I guess. So it would be, so, so here I have some examples. So OK. So every, and then the, the, the unique thing is that, and why it's been able to, to, to phonetically read them is because the sound of Maya are very similar to Spanish. So the vowels, A, E, E, O, U, and it's the same sounds in Maya. Yeah. And then, of course, they have the glottal stops and all of that, but then that's where it starts, <laughs> right? And every sound that Maya made was independent. So archaeologists have found over a thousand symbols, and we know that there are about 300 syllabic sounds and about 500 logograms that were used, but every syllabic sound had more than one symbol to produce that same sound. So can I... So it, this is a syllable. Sil, sil, sinogram. Wait, you said another word just now. Syllabogram. Syllabogram. And this is a logogram. logogram. Can, is this a logogram? Yes, that would be a logogram. Okay, because that looks like one image. And then this would be syllable. Syllable. Two syllables. Okay, because you see like the difference yes, in, you, the, you, in you, the photos. You. Okay, so I, w I want to test the students now. What does this one say? I remember it's hmm. matcha kawil meaning no power, and here it's an area I think. Mm -hmm. I can't remember well, but I I think it's an area that means there's no power in this area. Ah, yeah, interesting. So there's a logogram. You see, we've been working with the students with only syllables. Okay. And here we have we have logograms. Okay. So it's the tan, tan. The whole word tan. Yeah, tan, and then the other one is chen. 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 That's an area. Uh, in the middle of Chen could be used as a as a cave or as a location. Okay. Right? So it's in the middle of this location. There's no power. There is no power in the middle of the location and then coming back here. There's a ka syllable on top. Ka. Ka syllable on top. And the last syllable on the bottom. And in the middle you have the logogram. This is a logogram. This whole head. The whole head is a snake head. And that's a can head. Logogram says can. So the, the Maya gave you the first sound, which is ka for can, and he added the la, which would change the ending of the, of the word, of the logogram, mm -hmm. to kanul. Ah, so there's so no it's the, power in the in place the of the kanuls, 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 which is the place of the snakes, ah. which I'm is the home <laughs> of a <laughs> dynasty. Yeah. Right? So there's no power in the place of the kanuls, of the snakes, and then grabbed or molded yeah. was the kawil, left Here. that's grabbed or molded was the kawil and the kawil is power is a god of power so he oh said, yeah so this is this, this yeah, matches, yeah kawil so grabbed is the kawil by ush tetun ush is number three so it's the three little dots ush. so that's three ush te and then te the logogram and then we have the logogram tun and then the ni syllable which actually helps you to pronounce the last sound of that logogram so altogether, it means no power in, in the, the middle place of the, the, the snakes, in the middle of the place of the, the snakes, snakes, and then grabbed or molded was the power by Oshtetun, which is a specific location that today we know as Kalakmul. So this is a shift of power so from this is one city came to, to another. Overthrow another person. Yes. Conquered. and it was actually a Conquered. family yes. feud. Apparently, either two brothers or two kings from the same site fought. One killed the other guy, and he said, all right, well, stay here, I'm leaving, but I'm taking the power. Uh, so he took the power. Wow. You know, and the people, this is, this, is, this is the story, this is people. Our country, the capital of Belize was Belize City, but today the capital is Bamapan. Bamapan. So they took the power from Belize City. And the, the seat of power was moved Ooh. to Bamapan. Uh, we wrote a conflict, but we did it. Okay. Here, the Maya. And so what does this one say? On the, on the top is a date, okay. 18 Kankin, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. half Katun, which would be 10 years. And then, very, very poetic, they're telling us that the 10, the, 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 the ten years died because they have the Jaguar God, which mm -hmm. is one of a paddler God. They have a Stingray God, which is the third one, the one in the middle, that guy, is a Stingray God. And then the Young Wind God. And the paddler gods are gods who normally transport time or people across time after death. So it's the death of the 10 years that's being celebrated. And during the death of this 10 years, on that date, there was a shift of power. Now, 
flip it over and let's see why so the shift of power. Are, these, are, they, are they normally written in fours? No. Okay, this is no. just how we were doing the demonstration. They had, they had a, okay. No, they had a space. Uh -huh. That's how they found in the stone. Don't worry okay. about this. <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> go ahead. All right. Then if you go on the top, okay. it would have the date. Oh, but this is completely missing. This, what that's you missing. At? That's missing. Because, well, we have a, a small portion of the date right there. Okay. The two lines, so that's 5, 10. Uh -huh. And you might have a little dot, so it would be 11. Uh -huh. And then we have the month of the Sol Kim calendar, which is okay. no, right there. There, on the bottom, that, that's the month of the Solkin calendar, which is the lunar calendar. Then the other glyph to the right. There's nothing there. How do you know what's To the right of that. Oh, okay. To the right of that. Sorry. <laughs> there. <laughs> that, the okay. So that, this is lost. That's in, lost. This is lost. That's lost. So if this is, this is taken from where? From which side? Sunantanich. Sunantanich. So that would be like it's just been buffed out or weathered or... Either weathered or eroded or somebody, I would more believe somebody messed with it, it scratched oh. it wow, that's okay. sad. in antiquity yeah in antiquity oh because this was just found three years ago. somebody vandalized it like yes. way back in way AD. back in yeah somebody messed with it then that is death 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 and the logogram death and then the syllable me on the bottom this is the logogram for death, death. or the entire yes. thing the, the one on top and the on the bottom top. you have the that's a syllable me me which is also could be phonetically used as a debt or to okay and here what are to we be looking to die oh. zero you guys can jump in if you know too you know <laughs> then, uh, then 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 the, that would be the name of the the queen of caracol mm -hmm. bats ek bats ek bats ek bats ek, ek. bats okay. ek holy woman of yasha holy Uhul. woman of yasha okay and then all the numbers you see there is just the the the, the time that have elapsed since the date mm. and the unique thing about that i want to highlight is uh, on the bottom, the other glyph, you see a finger? If I see a finger the here. The, the, yeah. There. The artist, instead of using a dot for the number one, he mm -hmm. decides to put the number one as a finger. Uh, that How do you really stop pointing at this one? Style. Because of the, the month that's yeah. on the bottom. and So, okay. archaeologists did their, yeah. their work. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> then that's the end of that phrase. Okay. So, the death of Batsek on that time. She okay. was a holy woman of Yasha. Then and he says, final. another day. Then it has five Yashkin, they actually spelled it out. Yash. Five Yashkin. Yash kini. Five Yash. Yash. Kin. Ni. So kin ni. ni. Okay. Five Yashkin. Five you Yashkin. The debt. Another debt. Uh -huh. So this is a date. Yes, the date and then the debt of. Now, this is something really cool because normally you have who died, mm -hmm. like what they did on top. Mm -hmm. But here they give us a little bit more information. They said, how did the person die? And he died by the tune in the hand. A tune is a stone. Oh. The Maya did not have metals. Yeah. So their knives were made of stone. More like Killed obsidian. So somebody, stabbed him. somebody stabbed. So that's the hand? Yes, that's a hand. And on the bottom is a stone. That's, that's stone. stone. And then who died by the stone? It was the 18 sky something with the logogram. Must have been somebody important. So yeah. it was a, it, he was good to say that. Because on the bottom it says he was a holy, holy person of the canoe. So well, they killed the priest. King. They, they killed stopped the priest. Yeah, they killed a king. Crime, wasn't, crime has been bad for a very long time. Cain and Abel. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's amazing. I'm interested to see them write. I yes. know. I w I w can we move into some writing yes. very quickly? Because we're yes. still running out of time. Um, what are they going to write? I know. What are we going to learn to write this morning? Um, well, we're going to write a love poem. Belize, something um, I can no. use and borrow and look good. Um, because we're running out of time, <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to do your names. Okay, great. Wow. So go uh, ahead. You can stand up if you'd like. That's probably easier. So what do you get to cover while they're working? What do you get to cover? I think you can write on this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. You can write directly on that. What do you get to cover in, in the club? How often do you guys meet? Um, uh, mostly once a week because... Okay. Um, we either have schoolwork after classes um, or Mr. Lyon's busy on a tour. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How do you hope to keep this going? Um, these, these young men are moving out of fourth form, so they're going to be out of the school system now. Um, w what is your plan? What, what is your hope? Well, I need to thank the, the teacher that is behind them because behind the whole, the whole program, mm -hmm. I can't do it alone, you know, so... Right now, Ms. Triva is, is with us. She's heading their, she's their tourism teacher. Mm -hmm. 
and she's a great support because when I can't make it in, she, she fills in and, and yeah. she's there with, with, with the kids. And um, we're hoping to, to have new members come in. And I think that next year we're going to get a great boost because of what they've done yeah. and what they've accomplished. Um, one of the things that we're doing at the school, and we, we had this conversation when we were coming back from Tumulkin. Now, just to add, yeah. I've taken them to teach. Nice. Other kids. Wow. At Tumulkin? We went to Tumulkin yeah, to teach. Nice. Maya for Which Maya is Day. in Blue Creek in, in, Blue Creek. in Toledo. So we were part of Maya Day and we were there teaching the Maya and everybody to write their names in hieroglyphs and how it works. Awesome. Um, they've also joined me to the... Anthropology um, Day. Anthropology Day with um, Galen. Galen organized an Anthropology Day, so we were invited. They were part of it as well. Um, some of the photos that are... Pioneers. So we've been, we've been around and we've yeah. been out sharing what we know. Um, and then the surprise. And the big surprise. What's the surprise? <laughs> you tell us the surprise. <laughs> um, well, when we first joined the club, um, we were getting a little better, uh, getting to understand the glyphs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was this day that Mr. Lyon said, I'm going to bring some of my tours that I'm right now in my tour <laughs> after classes. And you have to teach them how to uh, write and understand the glyphs. Uh -oh. So um, they were like, uh, five presenters, including me and Andre, and um, uh, we thought did well. And then at the end, we, we realized that the tourists were actually Galen students. Uh, wow! So uh, you were teaching university students. Yeah, but uh, we you then didn't got know. scared. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if you knew there were university students, it would have no, been no. No, we didn't know they were. But if you knew, it was going to be harder for you to do uh, it. Yeah, because we'd be like. Uh, no, you have a skill that they don't have. You can always be a teacher. And, and I know you have a lot of passion for this. Um, and, and, and you're doing it because of um, wanting to give back to the culture and to bridge that gap. But what are the economic opportunities you're talking about? Um, that exercise where you took the Galen students who were guising as, 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 as tourists. But what are the economic opportunities that you see springing off? That looks good. That's you? Yeah. 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 That's my new Facebook profile K picture. B <laughs> Nick? Kevin. Yeah. That's how you say it? K that would say Kevin. K so the pronunciation uh, doesn't change. Right. It's just yes, the, the way you write it. Okay. Yes, that's right. Exactly. So the, the, we're, we're not going to change your, your name to Maya. It's the same pronunciation. So phonetically, we're just using other symbols to produce the same phonetic sound of Kevin. Oh. And we're going to do the same with Marlene. So the way you. So oh, the, 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 the way it works is you take the name. You break it into syllables, right. right? And then you look at the syllables, and then you yeah. take the syllables and you form yeah. your glyph. Nice, nice. So you're talking to us about economic opportunity that you see, because you're a businessman. Yes. And you love glyphs. You have these young people who um, are buying into your vision, which is very rare in a country to have somebody with vision. So congratulations. Okay. And to share that vision with young people is another um, gargantuan. Okay. Accomplishment, but what is the economic opportunity? Where do you see this going? Uh, economically, I, I I haven't really thought about the economic <laughs> opportunities. You I mean, as a, as a tour, uh, yeah, I just want to share because um, when I when I for me it would be well, not even for me, it's for my guests because my guests are the ones who you know enjoy the the learning opportunities that they have as long as they want to be taught and they want to learn i'm going to be there to to, to give them that um but um well i i i don't charge to go out and do these things i as long as as i have a uh, funding to to cover my transportation and food i'm off and i'm doing it so it's not really I haven't thought about the economy. Mm. But a very simple thing. I mean, I could imagine going to, which, which I love. Um, I, I really love the temples. They, I mean, they're fascinating. It always brings me back to a core of myself, which I seem overwhelmed by the simplicity of the culture and how, how dynamic they are and how it, it's almost like you're, you're, you feel smaller there. Yeah. Um, but I could imagine me going to St. Anthony, sitting there waiting for the ferry to go across, and this one comes up and says, hey, do you want me to write your name in Mayan? Uh, you give me four bucks, and it, it costs four bucks, and I can frame it. I would go back home. That would be in my office. Um, I could write a love note to my wife or uh, to my partner. And um, I win. 
<laughs> yeah. by, by far. That's, I yeah, by sure. It. And yours is also bigger. I <laughs> mean, that is awesome. Can I say something? And, and it's going to seem a little far fetched. But here's the thing a lot of people like doing body art, they like tattoos, and yeah. they do Chinese yeah. calligraphy. Yes. They don't always know what it's saying. Yeah. Why are we not doing this as, you know, put your name or love or hope or faith or whatever word inspires you. This is beautiful. And then we hire these young boys to, um, you know, all those tattoo artists that, that they should get your number and yeah. encourage people instead of doing Chinese. Yeah. Do mine. And, if you, and just, just uh, something there for our yeah. viewers. Don't go on, on the internet and just type in your name and <laughs> or, or go to like sometimes you go on cruise ships and you have this machine that you you tap into it and you write your names and you printed something yeah. and then next thing you know you're it's not accurate yeah <laughs> and then it's worse when you tattoo, tattoo that on. Yeah. <laughs> and then I see that I go oh <laughs> yeah. Do you tell them? Uh, yeah I have a friend who did it and I was like. Eh, you gotta fix that. You should have asked. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was a great. I, I was just giving it as an example. But it's so. It's beautiful to look at. I can say that much. It's very how interesting. How come your name was pronounced twice? No, oh, it's for the, it's the, the process. R A, yeah. It's, it's the process. The R A turns to L A, Mara Lenny to Mala Lenny, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's Ma La Le Ni. Nice, nice. Yeah, so one of the things about the writing, um, we've only, only so cool. deciphered 60% of my hieroglyphs. And 20%, the additional 20% has been partially deciphered. So we have sounds that we don't have a symbol to produce those sounds. So we use substitutes. Uh. And so... Uh, the R is, uh, because there's no R in um, the syllabar, we use L as a replacement. Mm -hmm. As well as the B, we don't have the B in the syllabar, so we use the B. So you change it to Spanish? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Slightly. The closest okay. yeah. sound. Yeah, the what sounds the most like it. Yeah, that so that, that's is so cool. Awesome, man. Yeah. So uh, you guys stay in practice, right? I mean, you're going to graduate. Congratulations. You're graduating. I know you. if you're here, uh, uh, this is, must be a great skill set for you to have. Um, are you encouraged to keep on doing this on your own? I personally will keep studying, but in between that and whatever opportunities, like Mr. Lyon said that he will continue um, teaching at Mount Carmel. So in case he needs any extra hands, I will be more than willing to help him. Yeah, nice. Same as me. I, I will continue on studying and uh, will always be there for an extra hand if um, a Lyon needs it or maybe if they're planning a trip again to teach other Mayan people down south or you where where are you planning on going yes. to school? <laughs> <laughs> I will go to um, John Paul, the new um, junior college at Benke. Okay. And you? And I'm planning to go to Sacred Heart. Okay. So we'll have a hieroglyph club in Ooh. John Paul and in Sacred Heart. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, do, you just <laughs> call, you call Jorge to go. <laughs> All right. I want to share something else yeah. because th this is really cool. Um, Sylvia, Sylvia Bate is... Uh, She's an archaeologist and she works for, for Niche. Yeah. But she and her friends, other archaeologists, Leah, they're founding members of, of Fahina. They made this little book. It's an outreach program. And we, we, we tried working on this, but we got caught up with a lot of things. And this book actually gives us the story of, of this little girl. In, it gives it to us in English, uh -huh. in Spanish, and in Maya. So you guys want to what kind of money? Yes. And now you want to do glyphs. the hieroglyphs. We want to do the glyphs, that would do the glyphs that would be so that then Tea with our glyphs we could go to the village, to a village and have a, a Sunday and with the kids and the elders. and.